All right, let's talk about Move AI. You probably heard about this new mocap solution that getting more and more popular recently. And the promise it makes is game-changing high fidelity markless mocap powered by computer vision and machine learning with no more need for suits. But how good is it? Can it be a production ready solution? Today, let's find out. Motion capture has been one of the most important steps in my CG workflow, and it's probably the same for you as well. Having access to motion capture can significantly increase the content quality or even the production speed. Over the past few years, I've worked with multiple different mocap solutions, from AAA full performance capture volume to my daily driver accent suits, or some low budget suits like a Rococo suit. In today's video, I want to lean on my previous experience with motion capture and really stress test the Move AI system to see if it can actually be a viable solution for potentially replaced mocap suit. And hopefully this will help you to make a more informed choice when you pick your mocap solution for your project. This video is brought to you by Polygon Flow. Polygon Flow makes next generation tools that integrate seamlessly with 3D software and game engines to make world building a lot easier and a lot more fun. Polygon Flow Surface Scatter gives you full control in Unreal to scatter foliage and objects on any surface. It offers many more options such as creating different masks and a scatter through the path. Click the link in the description to get a 30-day free trial with no strings attached. Now let's get back to the video. The benchmark I'm using today is Accent's Link System. That's what I use for all my short films and my daily driver. And also I used the raw data from both system and did a retargeting myself to remove any unknown variables. Let's take a quick peek at the result comparison. Pretty similar, right? Now let's break it down to detail to see if it's actually the case. First, let's talk about price. So far, Move AI supports up to six iPhones and the more the better. And the minimal is two for a single actor. You can pick the combo that fits your budget, but in general, we're looking at about $2,000 to $4,000 to have a good coverage of the volume and a decent quality of the footage. And that probably puts it on the same level as something like a Rococo suit and definitely cheaper than the Accents Link suit. So if you're a bit more budget sensitive, Movie Eye seems to be a good choice, right? Yes and no. For the camera system like this, a well-lit space with a decent size is crucial. And I don't know about you guys, I really don't have free and a constant access to a space like that. And another cost you might want to consider on top of the hardware is the processing fee. Move AI offers the $365 a year subscription with a 30 minutes a month quota which is not enough in my opinion. I did two sessions for this video and each session ran about 15 minutes and that's all the quota I have for this month. And they charge four cent per animation seconds when you exceed the limit. Another thing is important to mention that before you commit to that 365 yearly subscription, you only got about two, maybe five maximum minutes for your own test. That wasn't nearly enough for me to do a full in-depth test before I decide if I want to commit or not. But enough about the price. Let's say you went all in and got six iPhones and got the space. How's the shooting experience? Well, it's a little bit rough. First is the space. It's a camera system and for good quality, you better make sure all the cameras see you all the time. So if you want to capture something like running or jumping or fighting, you better have a good space and enough clearance for a camera placement. On the contrary, when I did my other short films, I could use every inch of my room with the uh, mocap suit. I can run upstairs or run downstairs, not constrained by what the cameras can see. Well, how about we just do the outdoor? Aside from the weather element like Vancouver, where it rains six months a year, internet connection is going to be a huge challenge and it can cause you a lot of trouble. So how does the Move AI iPhone app work? You have one device that acts as a host and other devices will connect to the host via a Bluetooth or maybe a local Wi-Fi. And the host will need a connection to the internet during the session. Even though each device that acts as a camera doesn't require internet connection during the shooting, but if you shoot offline when you upload the footage, the system might bug out and you will potentially lose the footage. And it happened to us twice in two different sessions. So shooting outdoor without internet access can be risky. Okay, now you have all the camera set up and the internet connection issue solved. Let's roll the camera. 
and you soon you will find there is no live animation preview. So you just act it out and try to get as much as you can during the session and cross your finger, hope you get the footage. And since it's an AI system, so you don't really know what you get until you process the footage. And even after that, if the data is not as good as you expected, you don't really know what went wrong. It could be the background, it could be the clothing contrast, it could be the calibration, it could be anything. We just don't know. But enough about all the issues. How is the data? Let's do the comparison. I tested a bunch of motions that I think could stress test the movie AI system while wearing the accent suit inside so I can capture both data at the same time. Now let's take a look. Move AI can pick up basic motion pretty well, like running, walking, turn, leg movement, limb movement. It's a bit too much smooth filter applied compared to the accent data in my opinion. So you might lose a bit detail motion in there. Foot locking is not too bad as you can see in this clip. There's a little bit of drift, but not too much. It can handle some body occlusion, like arms under the leg, ground occlusion, or someone else occluding the body. But when the occlusion is too much, like when you're rolling on the ground and rolling to the edge of the volume, the data accuracy drastically drops. Body contact sometimes performs better than accents in terms of the post accuracy, and it captures fingers, but I wouldn't say it's too accurate. You can see in the clip that the hands are actually tracking on the surface of the body pretty well. Movie Eye actually picked up subtle motion like breathing pretty good. Fast motion is where it falls apart a bit. It doesn't accurately reproduce high frequency motion like fast punching, jumping, stepping. I think the smooth filter probably thought it was noise so removed all the detailed motion. And the movie AI can handle props location tracking, not rotation, which is definitely an advantage over accents. Multiple characters is possible, although the data is still not the best. Again, it goes back to the body occlusion that drops the data accuracy. And I understand not everybody has access to systems like Accents or proper mocap volume. And the movie AI seems to strike a good price point to cover the basic needs. But keep in mind that the hardware cost, it's not cheap either if you want to get the best iPhone out there. The shooting experience is not as flexible or accessible or even reliable. You probably will need to fail a couple times to know what's the best practice for you. One last thing I want to mention is a mocap session especially involves multiple characters. A complex choreography or stun or fight is a high pressure environment. And the last thing you want is to spend any minute troubleshooting the equipment and let your actors waiting. So at least right now, I don't think I can fully trust Move AI yet for a situation like this. Basic daily needs, jump, walk, probably it can be a useful solution. Check out the data and see how you feel about it and see if it actually covers your need. At the end of the day, whichever system gets what you need with the least trouble is the best system for you. Thank you for watching and if you want to know more about motion capture gloves, make sure to check out this video where I tested two most expensive mocap gloves on the market in depth. I see you in the next one.